Munza Mushtaq and myself received two death threats, two identical death threats on October 22nd. They were both written in red ink in Sinhala and uh, a, a rough translation of that read as that if we continue to write, we will be sliced up. As soon as I received it, I mean my initial, my first reaction was to dump it, to trash it. This is not the first time I've received a death threat, it's the third. It's the first time unfortunately for Munza. And, uh, but just before I trashed it, my secretary told me that La Santa, up to that point I didn't know that La Santa had also written or received a written death threat just before he was killed. My secretary, who was also La Santa's secretary, informed me and then he had filed this death threat away and when he showed it to me, because it was similar, the threat was similar, the writing was similar, the whole modus operandi looked very similar. That is why I took it very seriously. That is why I even had the threats compared by a graphologist who later confirmed that all three letters appeared to have come from the same fist. I subsequently wrote to President Mahindra Rajapaksa. To his credit, he immediately, in under 24 hours, he had ordered a police investigation and uh, the criminal investigations department have already commenced an investigation. What they have come up with so far, I don't uh, know. Beyond that, we have not been contacted. I, mean, I would have thought that with La Santa's assassination, that this kind of thing would stop. You know, the, the Sunday leader or, or leader publications has paid the ultimate price in having their founder editor assassinated in January this year. And I would have thought that that was enough, enough is enough. However, it doesn't seem so. I mean, and yes, you're right, we do continue to be the sole alternative voice as far as the English press is concerned. Um, we do continue to expose corruption and we do continue unbowed, as it were, and unafraid, which is the motto of this newspaper. And as a result, obviously, there seems to be a price to pay, unfortunately. There is very little room for tolerance, and in that context, for media freedoms. As a result, almost all of the media have bowed their heads. Uh, almost all of them are practicing a very strong form of self-censorship. And uh, they are all being extremely careful. There have been too many incidents. Uh, in the last two years, I think 11 journalists have been killed in this country under the watch of this government. Um, I believe over 20 have been abducted or assaulted or threatened or harassed in some form or another. None of these perpetrators have been brought to book. You know, this is a very serious indictment on this current regime. Whether the government is responsible or not, I don't know. But all I do know is that since none of the perpetrators of these incidents, including those who killed Lasanta, have been brought to book, then I can only conclude that the perpetrators of these crimes are known to the government. And that is why they are protected. And that is why almost the entire media have fallen in line, as it were. They are too afraid to buck this regime or to practice independent professional journalism. The, the price they would have to pay is just too great. It will certainly not affect our writing. I mean, I am a firm believer in independent journalism, professional journalism, and uh, no amount of threats is going to stop me. That doesn't mean to say that I'm going to be stupid or foolhardy. Um, however, like I said, it, it's something I firmly believe in. It's, I will not compromise my independence or my professionalism, uh, no matter how many threats we get.